we can go ahead and kind of get it started. And everybody straggle in, they can straggle on in because we need to make sure we can kind of get through the lesson and uh, get you guys out of here before one o'clock when they shut down the food process. Okay, I'm Although we're going to eat the spiritual first, though. Well, good afternoon. I'm Brother Matthias. I'm Greg Uh huh. My reader today is going to be Brother Rod. Good morning. All right. Good morning, my brother. We attend the Israel of God Bible study class. We don't do church, we do class uh, to study the Word of God. Mm. And uh, we teach the book from Genesis to Revelation. We don't read in between the lines, we read on the line. So if it's not written, then we're not going to read that because we can't add to or take away from the words that's already been written long before we come here. But he did say to the law and to the testimony, if they don't speak with both of these, then there's no truth there. So we have to make it make sense. And how, when you get into the New Testament, you look back because everything points always back to the Old Testament. And that's why you got to have both. And Jesus himself referred back to that. When he said, had you not heard of what Daniel the prophet said? Well, how are you going to know what Daniel said if you don't go back and see what he said? Amen. So we're supposed to be about the Father's business. And that's one thing we certainly try to do. We start off Sunday by coming out here and serving the family. Then after that, we give you spiritual food. So we're trying to do our part to make sure that we can get into the kingdom by preaching his gospel as we were commanded to do. Uh, trying to think of other things. Uh, we also attend Sabbath class. The Lord commanded us out of Genesis, starting at chapter 2, verse 1, and you read down into it, it said that the Lord blessed and hallowed the Sabbath day. And that's the day we're supposed to be keeping holy. Now, Sabbath, we're in class all day. And what we learn, we come out here on Sunday and bring it to you guys, but we definitely don't do Sunday church. We don't do Sunday worship. We don't do any of that. We do strictly, as the Lord said, we all claim we follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4. As it was Jesus' custom, he went in the synagogue and read out the book of Isaiah on the Sabbath day. Paul, he taught on the Sabbath day. And God, in Genesis 2, he blessed the Sabbath day. So everything in the book is about the Sabbath day. But somebody steered us towards Sunday. And when we do research on that, you'll find out who I can't do the research for you. I just point you in the right direction because the Lord said all of us have to study ourselves to show that we approve. That's right. And that's what we have to do. We can point the way out, show you some scriptures, but the rest is on you because you got to show the Lord that you're not lazy about seeking him. He said seek him diligently. He didn't say when you feel like it. He said diligently. That means your business got to be about his business. And that's all I have to say on that. Because uh, we all got to work out our own salvation, but with fear and trembling. And everybody, as one of my brothers said one day, he said, we all like a bag of popcorn that you put in the microwave. Some pop slow, pop, pop, pop. Then as it gets into the minute, it speeds up, pop, 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 pop. But after everything is through and the timer go off, you still have some that's not popped. Yeah. Right? So we pray that we some of the ones that been popped and done woke up That's right. to do what he say, which is to keep his commandments, right? So with that being said, y'all got anything else you may want to add that I may have forgotten? Oh, uh, if anybody got any questions, we could do yes. question and answers uh, after the lesson. I'm pretty certain y'all going to have some questions and answers. We'll be happy to uh, go over any questions that you may have. Yeah, uh -huh. this, all right. All right. And also, uh, when we read 1 Corinthians, the Lord always asks the male to come before him uncovered. That means not having a hat on because the Lord himself is the man's covering, then the wife, then the children. But he also <laughs> asks that the women be covered, and all this was because of the garden. When the husband wasn't there to cover his wife and Satan was there, and she had that conversation. So uh, those are his stipulations. We're not here to make anybody do anything, but I do know it's a judgment day for us all. 
And the Lord's going to play back that tape where you can't say, I never heard that before. And uh, I just put it out here. Like I said, we all grown, folks. We're not here to make nobody do anything. My daughter grown. I can't make her do nothing. Oh, and I wish I could. <laughs> like get somewhere in the class. Yeah. Because we know time is winding down. Yes. Everybody Wait. feel it. I mean, on your spirit, you just know something. It, some, we going toward that, that cliff. We see it where it wasn't supposed to be, where man was with man and woman with woman, and God had to say, don't mess with the animals, you crazy man. Mm -hmm. And man did that, because mm -hmm. it's in the book. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're heading down that track, and uh, the train can't stop. But we, as servants of God, we supposed to know what's going on. How you going to serve God, and he's showing you what's going on in his word, and nobody ain't reading the word to know what's going on. Like in here, it tells you to get to the place of safety. But I can ask the average person, where's the place of safety? And here, nobody makes it. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> but we go to church all our lives, and nobody never talk about getting to the place of safety. What's supposed to happen toward the end times that's going to lead us to get to that place? And that time, they're already starting the process now over there in Jerusalem. And I ain't talking about that little bit of skirmish they have having. I'm talking about when they started doing that animal sacrificing again. They already mm -hmm. built the house. And they're not already working on getting ready to kill this red cow, and that's going to cleanse them so that they can start doing it. Mm -hmm. But all this is on us for us to see, and nobody can't see anything. And the Lord said, who is blind but my servant? Who blind but this guy? He got the word right here, and he won't read it to know how to save himself. But some of us might need to go through the tribulation, though, you know. It may take that man to put something on us to get us to get right. But I pray it's not me. I hope uh, I can make it to where I'm supposed to no, get to that right. place of safety. Mm -hmm. So I ain't even got to go through all that. But that's another lesson. My brother Ryan here is going to open us up with the scriptures. And after that, we're going to get into it. I'm going to read from Psalm 85. Go ahead, my brother. Lord, thou hast favorable unto the land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy name. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and curse thine anger toward us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord the Lord I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Yeah. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Yeah. Surely his salvation is not them that fear him. Yeah. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Yes. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yeah, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. The reading comes from Psalms 85. I read uh, Psalms 85, 1 through 13. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name, can we all say amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for that reading, my brother. All right, we're going to get right to this. Today's uh, lesson that I put together, and it's not going to be real long, but it's going to be enough for us to get some understanding. It's going to be called, Come and Let Us Return Unto the Lord. Because a lot of us think we are serving the Lord and that we know the Lord. But the Lord said we keep walking away from him. We're not in no relationship with him because we don't do nothing he say. He done told us many times on what we should do. But he said, but yet they go about establishing their own righteousness and not the righteousness of God. But how can one know if he don't know what to do? And how can one learn unless he's been taught? But how can he be taught unless the Lord sent somebody? Mm -hmm. So just because somebody's standing in front of you all the time, 
you need to spiritually check him to see if he's been sick. Because you got some 13, 14 years talking about the Lord called me. Called you to do what at 13 years old? You ain't even lived life long enough to even be in nobody's pulpit. You need to be somewhere in school still getting some understanding because you got a long way to grow to get mature enough to even speak the spiritual word. And like I said, we follow in Christ's example. Christ didn't stand behind no pulpit and preach no gospel until he was 30 years old. First, you got to get the experience. Because, like I say, it'll be hard for me to stand up here and listen to some 15-year-old preacher. Yeah. And I'm almost 70. What are you going to teach me? Mm -hmm. He don't even know the facts of life. Matter of fact, he's still living on mom and dad free. Well, he got milk behind his ear. He got milk behind his ear. <laughs> <laughs> but yet he said he got called by God. See, spiritually, you can check that, and, and that's according to the scripture, and see if that be true. Can't be a follower of Christ and you're doing something totally different. That's right. <laughs> because who's greater? Is it the creator or the creature? And we got it twisted now because we like to tell the creator what we think he should do. And that's not the case. But again, like I say, it says come and let us return unto the Lord. And we're going to read that right off the bat. And see if that's right after scripture. We're going to turn to the book of Jose, chapter 6. And somebody get to that page, call it out, so all of us can read this together. We kind of like to let everybody read together so we can make sure we're reading the same thing and ain't nobody throwing nothing extra in. The book speaks for itself. That's right. Jose, chapter, chapter 6. Chapter 6. Chapter 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 430. Okay. We're going to read one through eleven. And I just happened to be <coughs> reading one evening and came into the book and at that chapter and when I looked at it, the first word stood out to me was come and it was in bold letters. And sometimes when we're looking to grab titles for subject matters, the Lord have it boldly written. And these mean these are some things we have to talk about. That's why he bolded it out so it can catch your eye and then you speak on that. Because he said, we all have went astray from him. And we did that from the very beginning at the garden. We didn't listen to what he said, and now look where we at. We were supposed to have been in paradise from day one to this day. Well, you laying back in. If you was married, your wife put some grapes in your mouth. And you just dress that garden up, and you treat your wife all nice and right. We were supposed to have been like that and live in eternal. Look at us now. We dying every day. We sick every day. Something wrong with us. But he said from the head to the bottom of the soles of your feet, we sick. And that's because we can take his advice and listen to what he's saying. And now we're in a bad state and condition. But we can be recovered. That's why he came there to recover this creation that Satan tried to take. So when we get there, my brother, everybody there, Jose 6 and 1. <laughs> Go ahead and read, my brother. What the book says? Come and let us return unto the Lord. Say that again. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Right off the bat. That's the lesson title. Go ahead with it, brother. For he has torn, and, and he will heal us. No, he don't do that because he love everybody. Jesus love everybody. He can't, He said he did what? He had, he, had, he had torn, and he will heal us. Uh-huh. He has smitten, and will will bind us up. Go ahead. After two days will he revive us. Yes. And the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Go ahead. Then shall we know if we follow on, on to know the Lord. That's right. His going forth is prepared as the morning. Uh-huh. And he shall come unto us as the rain. And what? As the latter and former rain unto the earth. Go ahead. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? What? 
Oh, Should June. I do? What is, that's a question. <laughs> See, when we start doing things that's displeasing to the Lord, he start talking and then he start asking you questions because it deserves an answer. It's the reason why that question mark is there. Because maybe we have offended him and don't know it. Read on, brother. What did he say? Oh, Judah, uh -huh. what shall I do unto thee? Go ahead. For your goodness is as a morning cloud, uh -huh. and as the early dew, it goeth away. And that, that it does. Every time we can be out in the fields or whatever, we can see dew on something, and at a certain time, the dew goes away. Go ahead. Therefore, have I hewn them by the prophets. Uh -huh. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Go ahead. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Read on. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Uh -huh. And the knowledge of God more than burnt out. <laughs> Look at that. See, you see what he said? He desired mercy and not sacrifice. But we ended up sacrificing animals there. Mm -hmm. But he, didn't, he never desired that. He desired to give us Life eternal is immortal, immortality, <coughs> and we blew that. Disobedience take a lot of stuff away from us. Yeah, and even with us having our own children, if your child is disobedient, <coughs> why would you reward him? What reward could he get other than some belt, <coughs> some of that real good love That's right. that turns him away from what he's doing, that he might get back on the right path? Because the last thing you want to do is turn your child over to the world. Because the world ain't going to have love and compassion for him like the mother and father will. And that's the same thing with this father here. He's got love and compassion for us enough to discipline us just to turn us from what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why he say, turn back to me. Come back to me. But you got to come back right. That's right. And you got to be right in your mind. <coughs> Because why come back wicked and you left wicked? <coughs> disobedient and you come back disobedient. Who want that? Right? Read on, brother. What did he say? But they like men uh -huh. transgress the covenant. That's what they did. Does anybody here know what transgression means? Transgression means against his law, the covenant. The covenant he made with us was the Ten Commandments. That's right. And if you break the Ten Commandments, now you done transgressed. You broke his law. Mm -hmm. Now, we can break God's law real easy, but let this man put a red light, green light out here. You'd be more concerned about, did I catch that light before it turned? Did I stop enough? Is the police looking? Why? Because you know when you break the law, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. That's right. They got loose air down there for some real serious lawbreakers. And then they got the pen for the ones that's just outrageous. So we have places for those that continue to break the law. And it's the same with God. He got a place for you too. Yes, and it's called lakefront property. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever thought about some lakefront property? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like moving in front of a volcano? And just waiting on it to blow. <laughs> and you want to see that pretty fire expanding out. But you can't get away from it once it erupts. Because sure you can. got you some lakefront property. <laughs> that's what he got. Lake the of lake fire. of fire. And that's lakefront property. You're going to have a front row view. And you're going to see a bunch of people in there, including yourself. And we're trying to steer away from that by coming back to the Lord like he told us to. Amen. He said, if you humble yourself. That's the first thing you got to do. Humble yourself means you submit. Yeah. I, I can't do this no more, Lord. I, I'm turning everything over to you now. It's out of my hand. I've gotten to that point to where I know I need you in my life now. Because everything I've tried just don't work. Maybe you can do a lot better than I can because I keep driving over that cliff. No matter how hard I try, I keep going over the cliff. So you got to be a better driver than I am. And I'm just going to get in the back seat and shut my mouth. And wherever you take me, it's got to be better than where I've been going. Mm. And a lot of us is at that point in our lives now. All he wants you to do is just submit to him and be obedient. That's a start right there. That's the key. Submit to God and then be obedient. And then you ain't got to do the sacrifice. Because he already did it. Read, brother, what he say? 
But they like men have transgressed the covenant. Uh huh. There have there have they dealt treacher treacherously against me. He said treacherously. That's street talk. Yeah, it is. That sister was treacherous when she did that to me. She just don't know. And that was my best friend. And with it being that close of a relationship, it becomes a certain word that we use. And that was treacherous. Can you imagine your parent telling you that? Well, what you did to us after all we've done for you was treacherous. Mm -hmm. You treasonous. That deserves murder. Yep. And that's what the Lord is telling us. He telling us how we are and what do you do with something like that? You got to put it away from before you. Unless you give them the opportunity to turn and they turn. But like I say, he can see your mind. So we can fool one another, but you can't fool God because he into mind reading. True that. Mm -hmm. True that. Yeah, um, so it's best to get that stuff out you now before you go stand before him. Because he said you're going to drink from that cup. But if mm. you found unworthy, mm. you touch that cup. And he said, oh, yeah, you're going to drink from it. Everybody in this room going to drink from that cup. But you better make sure you're worthy when you put that cup to your mouth. When it's your turn, because you're going to get a turn. Make sure you're worthy. Read, brother. Mm. Gilead is a city uh -huh. of them that work iniquity. Go ahead. And that's polluted with blood. Yeah, it is. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent. Now, you see how he read that, though? But he said, Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity, and it is polluted with blood. But the books say, where is, the, where is there no physician? Is there any physician in this land? Where is the balm of Gilead? See, Gilead is missing balm, and the balm is the word of God. So it has got all violent. They shedding blood like it's nothing because the word of God is not on the floor anymore. They done put the book down and they doing their own thing out there wilding out. Just like we doing out here now. We wilding out. Taking from one another. Killing one another. Stealing from one another. No love for one another. Lying. Lying on one another. Uh Sleeping with somebody else that somebody else is with one another. Mm -hmm. We done all kind of crazy stuff out here. And you don't think that that done went up to the Lord? Mm -hmm. He just ain't got up yet. But he showed us in Sodom and Gomorrah. When that stuff get up to heaven, the Lord say he gets up. And he comes down here. And he take care of the business. We know about Sodom and Gomorrah, but can't nobody find that place, can you? Because it's gone. If you find something, it's going to be glass char because the only thing left on land after it's been burnt up is glass char. And that's what he's going to do to this place here because he said it ain't going to be no flood no more. He coming back with fire. I don't know about y'all, but I've touched the hot stove. Fire ain't my thing. I don't like fire. Now, I can deal with some water, but fire? Uh-uh. Read, brother. For they commit lewdness. They commit <laughs> lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. What did he see that was horrible? There it is, whoredom of Israel. Wait a minute, we even got some whoredom going on? Oh, you betcha. Oh, who can do it better than us? Bunch of whores. That we commit whoredom. And he talked the spiritual. See, we think physical all the time. But you can be playing with your idols, your other gods. And the Lord called that whoredom, yeah. spiritual whoredom. And we got a lot of that. It can start with Sunday. See, that's the God. Oh, it's got many names for Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And many those are spiritual whoredom because the Lord never gave us that. But somebody did, and we'd rather follow that guy than follow God. And when you go look that stuff up, you'll find out. That stuff got to do with the uh, solar. Solar. With the solus. You also have it through Rome when he met at the Council of Nicaea. And Emperor Constantine, the Roman, they were pagan sun worshipers. And they mixed that in with Christ. And now we have Sunday worship. Mm -hmm. That's it. Ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. 
-hmm. It's got all to do with the Romans and them pagan gods that they worship. <laughs> they done turned all the gods people into doing that. But they did it through persecution. When they did that persecution back in the day, they was persecuting the Christians because they was keeping Sabbath. And they wanted them on sun worshiping day. So they did. So when they brought some of the people over here by boat, they worked them seven days a week. Non-stop. And finally, when they let them off, they let them off on Sunday. And they started equating that as the day of rest now. Because mm -hmm. they got the rest on that day from those heavy labors that were put on them. So it's a lot of history out there. But you got to love dealing with history, <coughs> geography, and stuff like that. But you'll know. So you can't be deceived because he says Satan went out and deceived the whole world to believe in something that's not even true. And he says, since y'all love lies, then let me give you a strong delusion that you believe some lies. And we love lies. We can't stand the truth. But the truth is supposed to set us free from what? The lies. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Israel is defiled. <laughs> hey, say it again, my brother. Israel is defiled. Uh-huh. Also, O Judah, uh -huh. he has set in harvest for thee. Yes. When I return, the captivity of my people. And that's what he's going to do, right? So let's go to the other prophet, Isaiah. Let's see what Isaiah had to say about it. Book of Isaiah, chapter 44. <laughs> and we're going to read verses 18. Okay? 349. Read 50. 40, 40, 40. I combine together. Yes, Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. They're going to play 50. Whenever. You ready, my brother? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. They have not known nor understood. Uh -huh. For he has shut their eyes. That's what happened. That they cannot see. That's why we can't see. And their hearts that they cannot understand. And we can't understand because he done closed off our mind. Because y'all don't want to. He said you have not the love of the truth in you. So why would I let you have the truth then? I might as well just blind you. And when you wake up, you're going to wake up into everlasting damnation. <laughs> But he said those that seek him diligently <coughs> while he can be found. See, right now he still can be found. Don't be like the ten virgins. Yeah. Well, he said five of them, they were ready. But the other five, they were not ready. And they didn't have oil for their lamps. And he came. And they weren't ready. And they was out buying oil. And he closed the door. And when they came knocking, he said, I don't know you. And he didn't let them in. So while he can be found, he said, I'm knocking at your door. Open up and I'll come in and sup with you. But you got to spend some time with him. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about him. You got to read about him. He said, as he told Satan, it is written. Why do you think he dealt with Satan? Every time he dealt with Satan, he told him as it was written. Yeah. That means he was reading some book. But if we've been taught to hate, <coughs> taught to hate to read, it's hard for us to get motivated to read. But they tell you in school, reading is fun to the mental, and it is. Reading is knowledge. That's right. You can learn a whole lot of things by reading. Mm. Don't deprive yourself of that, because other countries we have, you're not even allowed to even pick up a book. In some places, they don't even have books. We are truly blessed because the Lord, even though this is a nation that do a lot of things that's ungodly, the Lord still have people in these places and he said he'll be a refuge to his people. But you got to make sure you're one of his people. Right? Pick it up at the next one, brother. Go ahead. And none considereth in his heart. What? Neither is there Neither is there a knowledge of understanding to say, <laughs> I, have, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yes. Yeah, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. Go ahead. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? 
Look at that. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Uh-huh. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside. Yes. That he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie my right hand? That's right. Go ahead. Remember these, O Jacob, and Israel. Uh-huh. For thou art my servant. In what? I have formed thee. <coughs> thou art my servant, O Israel. <coughs> thou shalt not be forgotten of me. And that's his promise to us. That's his promise. Go ahead, brother. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression. Who wouldn't like to hear the Lord say that about them? He done blotted out all your sins. The ones that you've done. He done blotted them out. But then you can go right out there and tarnish what he done blotted out. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is just misuse your mouth. Mm -hmm. Act like you're not his child. Because when you're a representative of God, he said he's holy, so therefore you shall be holy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he said you should be out here acting a fool. You shouldn't be out here sleeping around, out here on the streets drunk and full of drugs. He didn't tell you to do all that. That's not holy. That's unrighteous. Mm -hmm. And he said we hold his word in unrighteousness. We want to preach the word of God, come and serve God, and you sleeping around. Who want to follow you? Who want to even listen to you? Because that wouldn't be the God I want to serve. Really? If he said he holy, you're supposed to be set apart where you don't even have to say nothing. Somebody can look at you and say, oh, there's something about that, that brother, that sister. There's just something about him. I don't know what it is. But I, I feel compelled to go over there and ask him something just so I can hear what, what they got to say. And if you're a servant of God, he got you there so you can say something. That's right. You his ambassador, his representative, and he got to have somebody who know what they doing. Blind can't lead the blind. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of that from our pastors. Anytime you get those pastors before you and they're not teaching you about this book, then you might need to check out that place because the Lord say, why pay for that bread which is not? Why pay for that? Go to church and spend that money and you ain't learning nothing. <clears throat> you have to learn. You have to invest in them. Mm -hmm. Just like it. if you're going to purchase you some property. <clears throat> you don't just go buy the property. You sit and research and find out how is it going to do? What's my return going to be on this investment? Just can't throw money away in the air. I need to study and do my homework on this property so I can see if it's going to hold its value and not depreciate on me. And that's the same way he is with us. <clears throat> he bought us with a price, which was his blood. And what's his return on that purchase? Is it damnation or is it salvation? Them are the only two options on the table. Mm -hmm. And he said, you get to choose which one. He, he a fair God. He's not going to even choose it for you. He said, you choose whether you want salvation or damnation. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. But I ain't going to wait around all your life for an answer. Mm -hmm. Either you know what you want or you don't know. But he said, he'd rather have you hot or cold. Don't be lukewarm with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, the Lord be moving Praise when God. people be studying. And like I say, I had two lessons to choose from. But somebody done read something, and the Lord won't let them know he acknowledged them. That's right. By the words that he'll speak. That's right. Through right. somebody's mouth, and that registered with somebody just then. And that's how he moved. We all spiritually connected. Right on. Some of us just ain't charged that battery up as well. Right. Yeah, so we're going to do like the Power Rangers in here. We're going to power up today. Oh, uh, yeah, you can bet you. We're going to get some power up in here today by the word of God. Yes, sir. This is the book of eternal life and salvation. And the Lord, he throwing everybody in here a lifeline. I know. He threw me one. Now that he'll throw the lifeline, it's up to you to grab a hold of it so he can pull you in. And get you out there drowning water. Because we all be drowning and sometimes we don't like to admit it. We're in a bad place, but ain't nothing wrong with admitting you're in a bad place. That's right. 
How can you get to a good place if you don't acknowledge you in a bad place? So he can change that. And he can do it. Oh, won't he? We say sometimes, oh, won't he do it? Oh, yeah, won't he do it? You dang right, he'll do it. That's right. Huh? He do it so good till you have to run and tell somebody. You just want to pick up and I can't. What's that number? Yeah, did you know? Oh, he did this for me today. And that's that spirit. Got to let somebody know how good God had been to you that's today. Right. Yes. Even better than you done been to yourself. Mm. He done been good to you. Yeah. Why? Because he let you have his breath today. That's right. That's a gift that somebody else didn't get to say I got today. That's right. You breathe. Now what you going to do with that breath that you done borrowed today? Are you going to affect somebody else's life? Or are you just going to be just breathing some air that you could let somebody else have? We all get to choose on how we're going to function in here. And we all are our brother's keepers. Okay, yeah. We are all connected as children from Adam. Eve is the mother of all the living. I mean, that's everybody. Yep. And we all live and everybody believe. Some just have melanin, some don't. But we are all brothers and sisters. That's and we right. all supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. That's right. Shouldn't be no hate in nobody. That's right. But you can't come to him with that in you. He's not looking for that. He's looking to raise an army. And if you want to be in his army, you got to qualify. Just like when you go in the military. Everybody go to boot camp first. You don't just go in there and get you a gun and get your mom and Uncle Sam's army. No, no, no. You got to go through basic training. That's right. You got to learn the program on how to be obedient. Because when we tell you you got to go in that foxhole or you got to do a special mission, but you got to cover your brother's flank, are you willing to give up your life for your brother? See, that's what Christ, he asked those questions. That's right. Because he gave up his life for his creation. So who are we? That you want to save yourself. But he said he that tried to save himself going to lose himself. Yeah, right. huh? mm -hmm. So quit trying to save yourself that way. If you die, die right. Die in Christ. So that way when he comes to raise us, you'll be in the resurrection. Amen. Because you did it the right way. That's right. Yes, sir. Huh? And that's what he want all of us to do to get it right. So we're going to program this thing. The mothership is going to take off here in a minute. Amen. Huh? What'd you say, brother? Where we at? I'm going to start back at 22. Go ahead with it. I have blotted out uh -huh. as a big cloud, thy transgression. Uh -huh. And as a cloud, thy <coughs> sins return unto me. Go ahead. For I have redeemed thee. Yes. Next verse. Sing, O ye heavens. Sing, heavens. Go for ahead. The, for the Lord has done it. Yes. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Uh -huh. Break forth into singing. Praise ye the Lord. Lord. Go ahead. O forest, uh -huh. every tree therein. And what? For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and, and glorified what? himself in Israel. See that? Jacob, because that's where it starts. Jacob and Israel, which is one and the same. It starts with them because they was given the oracles to preach the gospel. To all of the sons and daughters of Adam. Mm -hmm. That's what their job is. Proselytize. All the brothers and sisters out here telling them about this good news mm -hmm. that they should turn from their ways and serve this living God that he may bless you. Because it says if that brother teach you something like that then ask the Lord to pour you out a blessing. He'll do it. But you got to ask. But you can't ask if you're doing wicked. Because right. somebody else can pour you some blessings out too. That's right. Satan got a lot of blessings. For those that want to be famous, want to be rich, want all this materialistic stuff. Oh, say you can give you that. But you see what he said in that 23rd verse where he said, oh ye heavens. Mm -hmm. That's got an S on the end of it. So it must be more than one. That's right. Did y'all know it was three heavens? When you read the scriptures, it's three heavens. And the Lord said, I'm going to leave dead bodies from one end of this heaven to the other end. That's on the ground. That's the earth. That's the first heaven. Once you lift your feet off that ground till you get to the firmament, the water, that's the second heaven. From that bottom here to this water up in the sky, that's the second heaven. And God resides on the other side of the water, which is the third heaven. And no man can go there. No man. 
So why we keep talking about Big Mama got wings and she up there? She's up there with God. But God said, can't no man go where I go. So where's she, where's she at? Where they at? That's the last place you saw one. You weren't going up there to give her a, a welcome home party. You went to the cemetery and gave her a homecoming when you saw her go down in the ground. And that's where she at right now. Until he raised him. He said even David's sepulcher is still here with us. Mm -hmm. Now David was a man after God's own heart. And David gonna be in the kingdom. But David ain't up there. David is in the sepulcher. Mm -hmm. Sepulcher mean the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how we just we just talk <coughs> ourselves into believing lies and fairy tales. And that she got some wings. Why would she have some wings? Is she an angel? Mm -hmm. When did, when did, if we read the book of Psalms, chapter 82, the Lord says, didn't I say ye are gods? When he made us in his image, he was making us out to be what we're going to be that we lost at the beginning, which were to become gods. That's what we were designed to become gods. But yet, he said, y'all are going to fall like the press. Because we got a hard time believing that he wants us to be gods. And I ain't never read one time where God had some wings. Hmm. One, one time, but he said he made the angels with the wings. And we got that all twisted because the angel ain't even got but two, two wings on his back. That's wrong. The book says the angels got six wings. And eyes all over. And he got four faces. And he got feasts made of calf feasts. That's Ezekiel chapter 1. And they call them cherubs. Them the angels in the Bible. That stuff we be dealing with, that's man stuff and it's all lies. And we got to stop believing these lies. We got to. Because he said a liar won't inherit the kingdom. And if you believe lies, then maybe you like to be a liar too then. Huh? Mm. I'm just going to say it like it is. If you like lies, then what they make you? <laughs> liar lover. <laughs> liar lover, huh? Liar, liar. And we can't be that way. We're supposed to be with God's wisdom. We're supposed to do things according to God. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Let's get another prophecy saying out of this. Jeremiah chapter 3. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I just love sharing this gospel. I really do. I mean, if I ain't had nothing else to do, I mean, this could be my life job right here. I get so excited. Hey, Amen. I can't even stay in the house. Well, I'd be like, you coming home soon? No, girl, we still preaching the gospel. Why well, would I come home and I got the good news? Really? Yeah, home going to always be there. But God's people ain't going to always be there. You know, you you say you can be in front of your friend's face this minute, and he go out here and turn a block. And when you go out right behind him, they can say, man, you know he just died, man, on the block. Yeah. Okay. Just that quick. And then you start to think, I didn't get to say this. I saw him, and I didn't get to say that. That's how quick yes. the Lord can actually remove us from it. He said, but you ain't but to play the grass. So don't right. think about tomorrow. You ain't even got out today yet. Yes. It's got its own problems. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have to be mindful of that. And that's why when we're with our brothers and sisters, before you depart, you're supposed to tell them you love them. Yeah. You might not say them again. Tell them you love them. It don't hurt to tell somebody you love them. God said that's the second and greatest other commandment. Love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. And you know you love you from you. Look how long you look at you in the morning. Oh, I got to get right. Oh, these curls just won't set. Oh, wait a minute, I need some lipstick on. Oh, my hair just ain't right today. It's human. I got to get everything right. That's what he's supposed to feel about your name. Loving him just like that. And it takes a lot because we got a lot of hostility and anger and bitterness and wrath and malice. He said we got all of those attributes because it's in the book. 
And those are the things we're supposed to work on, which is the fruits of the Spirit. We're supposed yeah. to put those fruits down and start developing new fruits. That's right. And that's that's work. That's hard work. It ain't easy. No, it ain't, because this flesh wants to get wild. It can't tame itself sometimes. It think of things ugly to do and say all the time. Because that member in the mouth just wants to get wild. And it's a place for that. Right? Jeremiah 3, verse 12. What the book say, my brother? Go and proclaim these words toward the north. Yes. And say, return. Thou backslide Israel. Wait a minute. He didn't say the world backsliding. He said Israel is backsliding. Because Israel is the only one who had got the word. So I say he got an order. He gave it to the priest. And he got a nation of people that's his priest. And they were supposed to give it to the world. But how are they going to give it to the world if they backslide? The world is waiting on Israel to bring the message and Israel playing around. Backslide. When he say do this, they doing that. And we do everything opposite of what the Lord tells us. So the people now have gone wild and out because the priest didn't do his job. Then the church is saying it's okay to have certain kind of things going on there. They're putting up with it. They are putting up idols in them churches. They're not teaching the people in them churches. So in Jeremiah also, he says, woe to the pastor that don't feed my sheep. You mean the pastor's supposed to be teaching the people something? Yeah, that's right. You're not supposed to be going to church and talking about, oh, look at Sister Linda over there. I heard, girl, she had a relationship with y'all. And Jimmy is mad at her. They're talking about a divorce. Did you know something such is still not the treasury? Did you know all that was going on there, girl? I ain't had no clue all that was going on in the church. And all that time, ain't nobody talking about nobody. Hmm. We talking about relationships and stealing and all that other stuff that's worldly. Yep. And now you got pastors wearing tight pants is up in there. You don't know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah know. they on downloads, <coughs> okay. power bottoms. They got all kind of things going on in them churches now. Mm -hmm. Because he already warned us that his house wasn't going to be made a house of vipers. Mm -hmm. Lewdness. But look at it. We done turned it just into that. Mm -hmm. All kind of wickedness going on in them churches. That's why a lot of people coming out to churches now. No matter how they talk about we want to go back to church no more. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing he put COVID out there so he can shut down them whorehouses. Because that's what they were. Spiritually whore, I'm talking about. You know, I'm talking about no one man, right? We talk spiritually. Mm -hmm. When you ain't getting fed. And the Lord knows his people weren't getting fed. So he shut everything down. Oh, yeah. And he said, I'm going to do it better than that. I don't even want you coming out your house. Stay in the house. I'm tired of looking at y'all. Just stay in your house, close the door, talk on the phones, and don't come outside. I'm, I might let you out for three hours to go grocery shopping. <coughs> I just might do that. But then I'm going to make it so that you can call and they'll deliver your groceries. And then you wait till he drive off and then you open up to do it. Grab your bags and close your door back up and you stay inside. Oh, boy, we don't know what it was like to be locked up in the house for two. What was that? I forgot how many years we were locked up. About two. About two. Two years locked up in the house. Boy, if you married, do you know what that's like locked up in the house with your wife for two years? <laughs> oh, hey. I tell you what, y'all learn to live together and love each other because that's the only thing you can do. And thank the Lord that he didn't send that angel of death to visit you because a lot of people died in that pandemic. A yeah. whole lot of people died that didn't have to. But the Lord did that thing like he did in Egypt. He shut yeah. it down. But them folks in Egypt were so scared he just said keep your eyes open wide so I can see it. It's so dark out here, I can, I can wear it. And I don't want to be alone by myself. And then they looked down the street and saw Israel, the children of Israel had lights on. But the Egyptian was in the dark. Because the Lord will do that. He'll put you in the dark. Put you in the house and won't let you come out. Until we get some sense about ourselves. 
Because like I say, that was our reflection time. Whether we know it or not, for us to stop for a moment out the world and realize where we are, what's important to us, and where do we go from here. He gave us that moment to think and just, just ponder on your life. And realize that you better acknowledge <coughs> he the one that did it. Ain't nobody just brought no COVID out. That's right. No, nah, he said, I'm going to show him something. Yeah, they ain't seen nothing this year. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw this out there. And when he did, they just ran in the house. We were scattering like roaches. They ran all up in the house. Calling folk. Yeah, they done shut the schools down now. You know what it's like with all these bad kids I got at the house? Oh, girl, we got to do something. We're going to pray to the Lord that he remove this disease that's out here. And he gave us a breeze, and now we're back out. Mm -hmm. Now what you going to do that he opened up the door and let you out? Make it worthwhile. Go and throw somebody a lifeline with this gospel. Tell them about the good news. That's what, I believe. That's what he gave us that moment for, mm -hmm. to right. spread his gospel. Because the end is not. And we feel it. So we're supposed to be preaching. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Telling people, you better get yourself some get right. Time is winding down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? Where you going to go? And you're supposed to have the answers to tell them. Where we at, brother? Go ahead. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it down. Go ahead. Well, no, we started at no, 12. Uh, yeah, we started I'm at 12. I'm going to do 12. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backside Israel, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. Yes. For I am merciful, yes. saith the Lord. Yeah. I will not keep anger forever. Now, he telling us he won't do that. He won't be mad at us forever. He won't keep his anger forever. If you turn and be obedient, he won't. But if you don't turn from your way, oh, you can get them words off the page right there. Because he's going to show you something that you ain't going to like. That side of him. Because he was a lamb, but he's also the lion. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want to see? Mm -hmm. Which one do you want to show up at your house? Oh, when the lion show up, oh. Ooh, oh. you ever seen a lamb look at a lion? Uh, the first thing that comes to his mind is, is you hungry today? <laughs> Am I on the menu? Because if so, then I need to be in another area. This is not my side of town to be on. And that's the same with Jesus. What side do you want to be on when he comes? He come. You can be to the left or you can be to the right. But everything that's always been mentioned about God, if you to the left hand side, that's not a good place to be. That's not a good place to be. Everything good is to his right side because he said he take the sheep and put them on the right. But the goats, they go to the left and they going straight in that lick of fire. That's what he doing. So that love, he love you enough to kill you. Now, you think I'm lying? That's all them people that were back in the day. My mother gets so upset. How can this God kill all them people? I say, you just wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. He said, he going to fill up this earth with dead bodies. Mm -hmm. And she read that, but she don't understand it. But he said, I'm going to fill up this earth with dead bodies. Well, which body is it going to be? Yours or his? Somebody got to be them bodies because he said it. His word can't come back void. Once he speak it, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to be prophesied to happen. Yes. Right? Read, brother. What did he say? I only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. See, that you got to acknowledge that you sinned against him. That's the first thing. Humble yourself and say, Lord, I've sinned. A great sin. And David showed us he did it. They even know he sinned against Bush, with Bathsheba. He knew that. But the Lord still gave him his punishment. Mm -hmm. Killed that boy. And then look at his whole family house turned on itself. All on each other, killing each other. Because that's the consequences of sin is death. Somebody got to die. 
when you sin against God. Oh, oh, and he, he aims to collect. And he says, it's a terrible thing to fall into his hands. <laughs> Who can save you from him? Nobody. Read, brother. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, <coughs> mm -hmm. and ye have not obeyed my voice, he said the Lord. He said, you scattered yourself to every stranger. We don't even have to know somebody. We want to give ourselves up to him. Go ahead, brother. Turn, old, black, old backsiding children, yeah. said the Lord, for I am married unto you. Oh, wait a minute. The Lord is married to Israel? And he, he said, turn, oh, backslide. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way you can turn from backslide means that you had to have had the truth. See, yep. backsliding is turning from the truth. Not no lie, turning from actually knowing the truth. And you turn from that. Now you started backsliding. And everybody didn't get the truth. Everybody waiting on the truth from some people who got the truth that ain't giving the people the truth. And that's where the pastor come in. Because the Lord said, that day, when they see these events start happening, they're going to start looking for them pastors. And looking, they ain't talking about to talk to them. They're going to be looking to kill them. Because they done went all this time, and the pastor never prepared them for what's coming. They tell you the sun going to go out. The moon ain't going to give it light. And the stars going to start falling to heaven. And then the son of man going to open up that sky. And he coming with power. And the first thing he going to do is go on a killing spree. First thing. How come they don't preach that? And then he said he's going to call all of the fowls of the air and all of the beasts of the field to come eat all these people up off the ground. There's going to be so many. They ain't going to be able to bury all these people. See, that's too horrible. We can't talk about nothing like that there. Oh, you're going to run the people away. Well, if you don't tell the people what's coming, mm. then how are they going to know to prepare for it? Because it ain't going to be pretty. It's not going to be. Can you imagine waking up and looking up and the sun just ain't there no more? It's just, it's just dark. And you say, well, I know it ain't coming out today. Because you can see the sun. It's out. The sun is out. What are you going to do? First thing somebody going to say is, oh, Lord. But it's too late. It's too late. Because he had already started the process. And the process is called elimination. Either you're going to be with him or you're not. And that's just the fact. But we're supposed to at least prepare you so you can turn. So when this event happens, you are already informed and know what to do. That's the whole purpose of a pastor or a preacher that stands before you. Somebody call yourself a bishop. They're supposed to be teaching you. And if it says some bad things in here, then say it. He said the beginning of your wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That's right. Not the happiness, but the fear. Tell them about that dreadful stuff I'm going to do so that they'll turn and stop being crazy. Tell them, oh, you tell them. And he said, I sent a bunch of prophets to you. But every time I sent somebody to tell you all these things, you killed them. You killed them. You didn't want to know. You just killed them. Because I'd rather live a lie. Because everything is fine in my life right now. In a 26 bedroom home. I got my Bugatti. I got my Maserati. <clears throat> I got a bunch of women. I got a lot of money in my bank account. Everything is beautiful. And he said it's easier for a camel to go through that eye of needle than a rich man trying to get in them gates. But when I do that there, don't get a mistake. I ain't talking about no gates going up there. The gates coming down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's what the past supposed to teach you. New Jerusalem coming down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, we say it, don't we? Thy kingdom come on earth. New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But first, the son got to do his thousand years sitting on David's throne over there in that land called Jerusalem. See, he got a thousand years reigning as the king of the earth. Over there in Jerusalem. And then after that, the father kingdom come. Did y'all know that? Have a majority of y'all heard that before? Yeah, we have. 
Well, that's a good bit of news then. Yeah, we working with something. <laughs> Amen. Because a lot of people don't know. <coughs> they don't know that the Father's kingdom coming down here. Now, do a lot of y'all know what day the Father's kingdom is supposed to touch this earth? New Jerusalem? If you read the scripture, it tells you on the eighth day. Did you know the eighth day was in the scriptures? Yes, sir. Have y'all seen the eighth day? It says eighth day yes, in the scriptures. See, they're supposed to be showing us these things. It's the eighth day in the Bible. That's why they say circumcise your sons on the eighth day. See, the eighth day is you showing the father, not the son, but the father. You showing him, you understand that on that day, it won't be no more flesh and blood. So as your token, you're removing the flesh away. And now you understand spiritually, there's no more flesh and blood. Because the father can't dwell with flesh and blood. It's all got to be spiritual. So we all going to become immortal. <coughs> now, you can be immortal and be in the Father's kingdom on the good side, or you can be immortal and be in the Father's kingdom on the bad side. It's your choice. And you got to make the choice. Nobody else can't make it for you, but you got to do that. Right? Read, brother. And I will take you one of a city uh -huh. and two of a family, yes. and I will bring you to Zion. Look at that. So even in this word here, some of us got big families. And even in that, he's not going to take the whole house. He said one or two. We'll be lucky if two come out of a household that really get the truth. Because a lot of people don't want the truth. A lot of people want to stay in this world and be a part of this world. But the Lord say the world got to hate you. Like it hated me. You can't be of the world. You can be in the world to preach this gospel, but don't go out there and be a part of this world. So you got to give up a lot to deal with this gospel. And that's what he said. What are you willing to give up to follow me? And we can look at all the apostles and see what happened to them. A lot of them got beheaded for the testimony. See, it ain't no fun thing to preach this gospel. Because look what they did to Jesus. He's all excited. Look what they did to all the apostles preaching this word of God. And all he was preaching about, repent and come to me. And they got killed for that. But Jesus, his own family killed him. And then blamed it on the other people. <clears throat> See what them Jews that did that to Jesus. Nobody else. Because Pontius Pilate was going to let them go. Wasn't he? He yep. said, ah, this guy, he's innocent. I'm going to wash my hand on this hip. Or this guy, hey, he's innocent. And what them Jewish boys say? My God, you kill that guy. You kill him. And let his blood not be only on us, but let it be on our children's 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 children. Now, what fool would say something like that? I'm going to kill him, but yeah, put it on me and then on my Fourth and fifth generation, you can put the curse all the way down to them. Because I'm going to stand on this here and take responsibility for myself. Because we want them gone. And by the way, send us uh, Mr. Barabbas out. See, we need Mr. Barabbas. He's a strong, abiding citizen in our community. Because we can get down just like he do. Jesus, see, this guy here talking about all this peace and love and keeping his commandments. We don't want that guy. We don't want that guy. So we had him killed. But uh, what goes around comes around. And that's why I say do unto others as you would want done to you. Right? Because that sin is going to come back and visit you when that time is right. Read, brother. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. So them the pastors you're supposed to get according to God's heart. See that? Not them pastors. I call them some of them pastor, poor child, pastor, <laughs> such and such and such and such that don't be preaching this gospel because they're not saving your life. They're supposed to be preaching salvation. Salvation. How can one save himself? I came to this church, pastor, to save myself. What say you? What's the roadmap that I can save myself and have salvation? According to Christ. That's what they're supposed to be teaching you. And you're supposed to have an answer. 
But I tell you what, let somebody come out of Sunday church and you go to them <clears throat> and ask them what you learned today about the word of God up in that church. You know, a lot of people can't answer you. They can't tell you what they learned. <laughs> they say, I don't remember, but it sure was good. Oh, they had a heck of a sermon <laughs> going on up in there. Oh, they were doing this, they were doing that. The choir was outstanding. Oh, the kids' choir was this. Now, what did you learn about salvation? Why go somewhere for salvation and you ain't learning how to get it? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Just like if you took a cruise ship out. You got to know what's the plan in case the boat go down. Right. Who coming after us to save us if this boat go down? Do we have some extra little small boats on here that I might get on one? <laughs> I know it might be a fight to get on one, but I need to know I can get on the boat. Mm -hmm. Do we have an SOS signaling system here so we can call out to the Coast Guard that somebody can come and rescue me? See, we talking salvation. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a plan. How am I going to save myself if I get into a situation where I know it ain't nobody around to help me? How can I save myself? And church is supposed to teach us how to save ourselves. From ourselves. Because mm -hmm. we try to kill our own self. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's the whole key right there. You trying to kill you. But the book told you to kill you. Yeah. It said that flesh, you're supposed to fight that flesh every day. Every day you get up, you're supposed to say, how can I kill this guy <coughs> before he kill me? Because the flesh don't like to be subject to nothing God said. <coughs> so we're supposed to work on becoming more spiritual because the spirit dwells with spiritual. Flesh deals with fleshly. And the earth itself is full of fleshly people. Look how they act. They all about me. It's me. It's about me. I don't know about you, it's about me. I'm selfish. It's all about me. And a lot of people out there think that way. They're real selfish. <coughs> they can care less about your problem. They care less even about helping you. And if you think I'm lying, go out there and you really destitute and need something. Mm -hmm. And ask some brothers out there to give you something. Mm -hmm. See what kind of response you get. Right. You'll find out it's their love and the sickness. And it's not a lot of love because we have never learned to love like that. But Christ tried to show us how we should love like that. Right. He said, if that man come around you and you ain't got but your last shirt on, take it off and give it to him. Mm -hmm. You don't think he can give you another shirt if you serve in the true and living God? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that material. I'm separating you from material stuff that you will be willing to give it up. Because in the end, it can't save you. That's just some material stuff. But we can't let go of material stuff because it's status with you. We love status and clout and act like we something when he say you're nothing. And we need to hear a lot more of that. That when you think you're something, you're really nothing. And that keeps you at a low state the way you don't get so swollen in the head to believe you better than somebody else when all of us is the same. Go ahead, brother. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, mm -hmm. which, shall, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what they're supposed to give you. Go ahead, brother. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. Uh -huh. In those days, saith the Lord, what? they shall no more the art that women, they, they, no days, the Lord, they shall say no more mm -hmm. the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Yes. Neither shall it come to mind. Go ahead. Neither shall they remember it. Yes. Neither shall they visit it. Mm -hmm. Neither shall that be done anymore. Not anymore. So that's good right there, my brother. I just wanted to touch on that right there. <coughs> Let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. Page 448. <laughs> right, right. Zechariah 1, and we're going to pick it up at verses number 1. Zechariah 1 and 1. Zechariah 1. Yes, sir. 1 and 1. All right. 
in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, uh -huh. came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, uh -huh. the son of Berechiah, yes. the son of Edo, uh -huh. the prophet saying, what he say? the Lord hath been sore displeased with your father. Yes. Therefore, say thou unto them, what? Thus said the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. Turn ye unto me, said the Lord of he hosts. He said, Do what? Turn ye unto me, said the Lord of hosts. See, he always wanted us to turn. Evidently, we're doing something we shouldn't be doing. And it goes against him. So he said, Turn ye unto me. He your hope and help and salvation. Turn to that. Because who can save you from this man? This world is mad. I don't know if y'all got that memo yet, but this world is really mad. And it's hard to cope in this world. That's why a lot of people get out of it, because it's hard for them to deal with it. But they didn't turn to the one who can help, who told you to turn to him. He didn't say turn to your idea and do something to yourself. Turn to him. And that's all he ever asked us. Go ahead, brother. And I will turn it to you, son uh -huh. the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. Be ye not as your fathers. Unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, What? Thus saith the Lord of hosts. What did he say? Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. So that's what we got a lot in us, uh, evil ways and evil doings. And he said, just turn from that. You ain't got to do that. That's another alternative than doing evil and being wicked. Turn from that. Start being kind and loving as one would do our own children. You be affectionate to your children. They do something and get a bruise. You, you look at the tender care you'll give them. You'll pat them and put some old chemical on there. And then you put a band-aid on it. And then you, at the end, you kiss it. And say, it's going to be okay, baby. You get on back out there. That's, that's the love we're supposed to have for one another. If somebody going through something, take a moment and listen to that person. You don't know if that person is on the edge and about to push that back. You don't know. But the Lord knows, so he sends a befit word for that person as comfort. But you got to be there on your job to comfort that person, whether you have to put your arms around them and tell them it's going to be okay. It's not as bad as you think. Hold on. But encourage them. But don't turn away from them. Because he's watching all of that and you don't want him to turn on you. So that's the way the Lord wants us to come. Go ahead, brother. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me. They ain't hear what he's saying. But go ahead. Your fathers were, were your fathers, where are they? Uh-huh. And the prophets, do they live forever? Go ahead. But my words and my statutes, yes. which I commanded, my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, what? Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, what? according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. And that's the way the Lord is going to deal with us, according to our ways and our doings, how we're treating our brothers and sisters. He's going he's gonna to put that back on us. And that's why it's incumbent upon us to be stewards and take care of our brothers and our sisters, our elderly community. Take care of them. Like I said, we'll take our elderly and put them in a place, and then we won't even go visit them. And then we'll show up when it's check time. Yeah. And then we'll be uh, like we've been keeping them, and then we take their money, and then they don't see us again until the next month. Mm -hmm. And then we say we love them. Yeah. But you don't spend no time with them. Mm -hmm. And I know because me and this brother here, every Saturday we go to the nursing home and preach this guy. <coughs> And we see how they get left. They left behind. Mm -hmm. Like nobody cares. But the Lord knows. So he sent a confident word to them. He makes us go there. And preach this gospel to them. That they may be confident. Yeah. And we tell them we love them. And we have a relationship with them now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know that we're dependable. And we're going to be there if nobody else is going to be there. Amen. That's what a servant is supposed to do. And nobody shouldn't even have to tell you to go do that. It's out of the kindness of your heart that you know these are our elderly, and we gonna know them one day, and you gonna want somebody to visit with you. That's yeah, right, man. Man. We ought not be that way. But he said in Matthew twenty four that love's gonna wax cold. 
in these last days. Ain't nobody going to have no love for nobody. Ain't nobody got time for nobody. But we got to stop. That's why he stopped us with COVID. Stop and reassess how y'all thinking. We got people out here with special needs at home. Go visit them. Go do something. The Lord is about receipts. Like I say, when you stand before judgment, he don't need you to open up your mouth. He can read your mind. But I tell you what, when he reads your mind, he better see a lot of receipts in your pocket. And he said, your good works better outweigh your bad works. That's right. And them your receipts. I ain't got to say a word. Wait a minute, Lord. <laughs> Hold on. Got some side pockets here. <laughs> got some back pockets. Got some pockets on my jacket. I just got some pockets. But I got some receipts in them. And I don't need nobody to tell me to go do it. I just go do it. Because I have a love and a passion for that. Because when you deal with the elderly community, that's knowledge. See, they got so much knowledge of everything that doesn't happen. They can enlighten you with that information. They want to give it to somebody. They don't have nobody to download the information to. Because ain't nobody going to visit with them to talk with them. You know how much information they have? That's walking history. That's right. That's right. They can tell you a whole lot about a lot of things. And like I say, and then when you go visit those with the special needs, then you can make them joyous because there's some things they don't know. that now you don't gain all this knowledge. You can pour it into them. The Lord talked to the lame. Amen. Yes, he, did. he talked to all kind of people. Did he say he talked to the lunatic? Yep. And that lunatic understood everything the Lord said. But the one with the sense, he the one that's the lunatic. Because <coughs> he don't know nothing. The Lord said, you know, they, they just won't do what I tell them. Must be a lunatic. <laughs> I made it simple. Go ye out and preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Huh? Cast out some devils while you're out there. If you're going to be God, you may as well practice. That's right. How you going to be God and don't know, know what God do or how to do it? But he left the instructions saying, do this and do that. That you may become God. You got to practice. If you want to drive, you got to practice, don't you, before you go get some driver's license. You don't just wake up and say, I'm 16 now, let me go get some license. And you ain't been in nobody's car. You got to go somewhere and practice first and get your skills set down. And then you go take that test because you want to pass it on the first time. Same with this here. Go practice. He said, I give you power in my name. And my name is all power. Now go practice with my name. Uh, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all is it with y'all? What are you talking about? You know, I'm talking about those spirits. I ain't talking to you directly. I'm talking to those spirits. Yeah. How many of them with you? Uh, that sounds like a lot to me. Because you can't give an answer, but they tell you. When you use God's name and you talk to them spirits, they're supposed to tell you how many. Then they tell Jesus how many? We're legion and we're many. Now they had to confess that. Now, I adjure you. Can we go and get in these pigs and just go off the cliff? And they had to wait to be told they can do it. And then he did. He said, be gone. And them spirits went and got in them homes. And they ran violently and jumped off the cliff. The people in the town were so amazed, they came out the next day. They said, well, I'll be down on. What happened to all of the pigs? Man, now we ain't got no bacon in town. We ain't got no pork chop. We ain't got nothing. Because the pigs were gone. But there was some spirit. So that's why I say, he gives us things that we see spiritually that we're supposed to do. And see if it works. He say, try. Why would he tell you to do something in his name and then you don't even try? You still being disobedient because he said do it. Some of the simple and smallest things that he tell us, we ought to be doing it. Just to see if it works. But I can tell you, it works. Oh, it works. Where you at, bro? Uh, well, uh, uh, 12, 
Well, well, we stop right there. Okay. They got the gist of that. We got three more scriptures and I'm done. Let's go to Psalms. No, I about that. No, let's go to Psalms 86. Psalms 86. Because I want to read the Psalms instead of just all the prophets. Psalms 86. And we're going to pick that up at verse number 11. Psalms 86 and 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Uh huh. That's the first will, thing you got to ask. I will walk in thy truth. Uh huh. In, in truth. Thy, no, in a lie. In thy truth. So you got to walk in his truth. Put them lies down and start walking in the truth. Like the woman said who was in Alabama when a tornado tore their church down. The guy asked her a question. What happened here? She said, well, tornado came in and tore this place down. He said, do you think the government will come in and help you? She said, no, the government can't help us with this here. See, what you see now is all darkness. And she said, but we're the children of the light, not the children of the dark. Mm -hmm. How could that be that that happened? Because maybe God wasn't with y'all down there. When God do some things that are very destructive, it's because there's some things that's going on that the Lord got to deal with. Now, some of us may not like the outcome because some of the righteous might get taken with that. But the Lord deals with the wicked. And on his time, not ours, on his time. What do he say, bro? Unite my heart to fear thy name. Uh-huh. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God. Yes. With all my heart. With all of it. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. Uh-huh. For great is thy mercy to, toward me. It is. And thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Go ahead. O God, the proud are risen against me. Mm -hmm. And the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul. That's what they're going to do when you start dealing with this word. Go ahead. And have not sent thee before thee. Uh-huh. But thou, O Lord, art a God. Full of compassion, yes, and gracious, yes, long suffering, uh -huh. and plenteous in mercy and Look truth. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? I can't. One man can't tell you he got all that going on. He's full of mercy and he's gracious, slow to anger. Huh? You ever heard a guy, a oh, girl, ever tell you that? A woman? Let me say that. A woman or a man tell you something like that? No, nah, they said, "Boy, you better get out of here, boy. Don't get me turned up." Don't make me get angry. But he said, he's slow to anger. Plenty of sin mercy. That means, even if you do something wrong, unwillingly, all you got to do is call him. God, I, if I've sinned against thee, and I know I have, if you can find it in your way, knowing that you are merciful, slow to anger, Lord, Block that out for me. Yes. That you don't kill me right now because I know I'm not perfect, but in time. Just give me a little time and I can change. If you can't say that about yourself, give me some time and I can change, something wrong. Yeah. You should never want to be satisfied with staying the same. Mm -hmm. Each and every moment, you should be looking to adapt and make a change. Because it's going to affect somebody. It ain't always about you. It's about somebody else. Being affecting cause on somebody else's life, but first you got to change your life that you may affect somebody's life. Like they say, some people don't want negativity around them. So get positive then. Give them some inspirational words. Like repent. That's very inspirational to me. Repent. Then the next one is get baptized yeah. in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. for the remission of your sin, huh? Mm -hmm. That you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's that spirit being mm -hmm. poured out on you. And now, when you get through with that process, you're supposed to walk like a new creature. That old man, he's supposed to be left in that water. And you're supposed to be something new mm -hmm. that somebody can look at you and say, it's just something, I don't know what it is, it's something different about you. Mm -hmm. It's different. And I, it's just, I can see the 
aura over you. You done changed. Why? Because first your conversations done changed. Right? You change that conversation, then you start changing the people who you hanging out with. Maybe that's some of your problem too. Right? So go ahead, brother. Then we're going to get down to it and we're going to be out of here. Oh, turn it to me. To uh -huh. And have mercy upon me. Go ahead. Give thy strength unto thy servant uh -huh. and save the son of thine hand. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Show me a token for good uh -huh. that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hath hoping, hoping me and comforted me. He said, show me a token for good that they which hate me can now be ashamed. It ain't you. It's them. They hating you, but now because of you doing those good things that the Lord said, they're ashamed now. And that's the way it's supposed to be, right? That's it. Isaiah and then Hosea, we out. Isaiah chapter 1, and we're going to read 16 through 20. Isaiah 1? Yes, sir. 332. Isaiah 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 16. What the book say, my friend? Oh, I'm going to increase that. That's okay. It's all right. Okay. We working it out, my brother. All right, 16. Yeah, you got it. Wash you. Uh -huh. Make you clean. Make them what? Make you clean. Go ahead. Put away the evil of your doing. That's the first thing you got to do is put away that evil. <coughs> Go ahead. From before my eyes. Uh-huh. Cease to do evil. Yes. Learn to do well. Learn to do what? Learn to do so we well. got to learn how to do that. That's not in our nature. We got to learn how to do well to one another. Yes, ma'am. We have to learn that. It has been out of us so long, we don't know how to do well. We say we know how to do well, but action speaks louder than words. Learn to do well. Read on, brother. Seek judgment. Uh huh. Relieve the oppressed. Do what? Relieve the oppressed. So anybody that's oppressed got a lot of stuff going on. Relieve them of that. Go talk to them and bring this bomb with you, cause they need some medication, <coughs> and you are the physician that's got the medication. Go heal the people. Go ahead, brother. Judge the fatherless. Yes. Plead for the widow. And plead for that widow. Because she going through some things. And you supposed to be there to comfort her. Go ahead. Come now and let us reason together. So we can't do anything unless we reason together. Because we got to make it make sense. How does anything make sense to you unless you reason about it? <coughs> like reason about is one plus one two? How do I know it's two unless I reason that out in my mind and say, well, if I take this one right here and this one right here and I put them together, that makes two. That's reasonable. Yeah. Well, I've just reasoned. I know if I go down here to the bridge and I just jump off, if I reason by myself, well, what's the possibility of me uh, surviving that jump? Or hitting that water and not that concrete? What's the, what's, the, what's the possibility of that? See, now I'm reasoning. Because it's got to make sense. For you to do anything, you got to reason about it. That's even with the word of God. Does this line up with what I'm reasoning with to make it make sense to me? Am I going to heaven when he say no man can go to heaven? Somebody is done lied because I believe I was going to heaven when I died. And then I read Jesus said no man can't go where I go. And Jesus went back to heaven. I got a problem. I might have to get a couple of people with me and we're going to reason about this and make it make sense. Because there's a lie in that. It's a lie. And we're supposed to stamp out the lies. Put that away. Right? So we reason looking for the truth. Go ahead, brother. Though your sins be as scarlet. Yes. They shall be as be as white as snow. Go ahead. Though they be red like crimson, uh -huh. they shall be as wool. Yes. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Wait a minute. So you got to be willing and what? Obedient. Wait a minute. No, we can't, we can't be obedient. We got to be disobedient. Did that say disobedient? That say obedient. Willing and obedient. So the only way to be obedient, you got to be willing to submit yourself right. to somebody that's telling you to be obedient. Right. Like your parents. Boy, did I say, what did I tell you? 
Uh, you told me I had to do my chores. Did you do them? Mm-hmm. You better not say I didn't do it. Because now you've been disobedient. And what's the punishment for disobedient? Well, where's my bill? Oh, I'm going to do it then. I, I got it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. No, 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 no. Don't worry about right now. Right now, we're in a whole different conversation right. than when we were when I asked you to do it. Now, I'm going to make you do it. And you ain't going to like how I'm going to make you do it. But you're going to do it. Oh, you're going to get her done. Right. <laughs> you start talking like that guy. Yeah, let's get her done. <laughs> no, not right now. Not right now. We gonna get something else done. Yeah. Forty lashes for disobedience. Mm-hmm. And the Lord says, mark those. Mark them people that that's disobedient like that all the time. Mm-hmm. There ain't no children of God that's just constantly <coughs> disobedient. Where you at, bro? A hey, twin. You're 12? 20. Oh, 20? Go ahead and read that one, and then we got one more after that. But if he refuse and rebel, then what? He shall be devoured with the sword. Oh, not the Lord. You mean he talking sword? Let's kill him. Go ahead. By the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Because the Lord is going to do it. You don't want to do what I say, then I'm going to do you. Can't be but one God in the house. Like my parents say. There ain't but one man up in this house. In my house. You got a job and paying bills up in here, partner? If you ain't, then, then maybe this ain't your house. This is my house. And these are my rules. Did you read my rules on the refrigerator? Read them. Because this house got some rules. You can't come in when you want to. You can't go out when you want to. You just can't be eating up all my food when you want to. Why don't you go outside and play? Stay out there till dark. Don't, the more I see you in here, you eat up my food. But every time I see you, you got my ice box open. Yeah. And you ain't paying no bills? No, no, no. Let's get something straight. Who house is this? <laughs> hmm? See, let me introduce you to you in case you don't know. This is my house. That's my wife. <coughs> you can't talk to her any kind of way. She's your mother, but she was my wife first. We got rules up in this house. Then you got to abide by my rules or go get your own house. Mm-hmm. I heard that one before. Mm-hmm. And I told him, oh, I'm not ready. I ain't got no job. Got a paper route, but I ain't got no job. Where I'm going to go? Now I'm talking like a son. Where I'm going to go? <laughs> Where I'm going to do? I'm going to have to follow them rules. Mm, that's, right. that's my only option. Till I get grown, then I can go get my own place. But until then, I'm in their house, and I must respect that house because it's their roars. And that's a good thing. Sometimes we, we mischaracterize that. Yeah. But that's a good thing because they taught us that you don't talk back to grown people. Right. You don't curse at nobody. You, you, you got pants with a belt loose. Put a belt on. Learn how to act because when you leave out this house, you represent my name. That's right. This is our home. Don't go out there and shame my name out there. <laughs> Same thing God said. Mm-hmm. That's how we supposed to act when we, even when our parents ain't around, they supposed to get a good report. That's right. Miss Bernard, I saw your son out there. He was helping this uh, lady with her groceries get to the house, and then she wanted to pay him. He didn't even want the money. And then he started helping somebody else. He was shoveling her driveway. He was, that's what they supposed to be here. And then when you get home, they say, well, boy, I heard the good news. You yeah, have old Miss Such and Such and Mr. Such and Such and Such. Well done, my faithful son. Well done. Boy, wait a minute. How much I gave you an allowance last week? I'm going to have to up the ante and give you 50 more cents. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add on to that $1 allowance. Uh, really. <laughs> and I'm glad they gave me the $1. Because it let me know how valuable a dollar was yeah. and it wasn't going to be given to me that I had to work for what I had. That's what that was for. And we get it twisted. Well, you know, my friend, he got $20. He got a $100 allowance. Well, that's his house. But in my mother's house, it's yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. 
uh, did you get the yes man? And everybody that was old yeah. around my parents' yeah. age was yes ma'am and no ma'am. Right. Yeah. Respect your elders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Money shouldn't change you. Mm. But some people let it change mm. them. And they started creating things that you don't like because it's become their God. And we shouldn't have that. Let's go to the last book. We started with the first book in Hosea. Let's end it with Hosea. Hosea chapter 14. Let's get through this and let them get some food. Oh, I'm full. <laughs> oh, that's where it is. Something else, bro. I don't know where we'll be. I thank the Lord that he left this word for us. Yes, man. Amen. Amen. It's our guide in life. Yeah, yeah. Right. As the world turns right. into the days of our lives. Mm. Shall we raise all our children that they don't be young and restless? <laughs> 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 uh, Jose, Jose chapter 14. 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 432. 432. <laughs> 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 yeah, we race it to the table, bro. I like that, though. That's that zeal, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's that zeal. We're going to get this, though, and get on out of here. Yeah, really? We appreciate y'all. Yeah. <laughs> 14, and pick it up at the one, my brother. When we get that, go ahead and read. O Israel, uh -huh. return unto the Lord he our said, God. He started off that way, O Israel, but he said, come and let us return. return. But here, he said, what? O Israel, Do what? return yeah. unto the Lord our God. It ain't too late. It's not too late to return to God. Why you still have your breath Amen. today? Amen. Today you can make that change in your life. Really? Really? And stop living that lie and start living in the truth. Amen. And the truth, he says, shall set you free. free. And it will. It'll turn you free from them lies. Amen. We held hostages to lies. Amen. So much tell we don't know up and down no more. We don't know Sunday is the first day and Saturday is the seventh day. Now we'll say, well, any day is Sunday. Any day is Saturday. No, it ain't. No, it, it can't be. Every day can't be the same day. But you never go to work, you never get paid. Hmm? It can't. But yet, some people say that. Because they believe that. But the book don't say that. What do you say, bro? Go but ahead. thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. That's what made us fall, that sin. Go ahead. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Uh -huh. Say unto him. What? Take away all iniquity. Remove all this sin off me, Lord. It's and so heavy, it's weighing me down. But I know through your mercy and grace you can remove that. Like he said, did he say he'll take your burdens? Yeah. Well, them lies is a burden. You're burdened with untruth. He said, put that on him. He, he got the shoulders. He can carry all them lies for you. And put you in some light, which is that truth. Go ahead, brother. Take away all iniquity yes. and receive us graciously. So we, uh, so will we render the calves of our lips. Go ahead. Assure, Asher shall not save us. Uh -huh. We will not ride upon horses. Go ahead. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. What? Ye are our gods. Yes. For indeed, the Father despises mercy. And he do. Go ahead. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Wait a minute. So he's going to heal all that backsliding we doing. Mm. And at the same time, he going to love us freely. Why? Because once you heal, now I got something I can work with. Go ahead, brother. For mine anger is turned away from him. Yes. I will be as the dew unto Israel. Uh huh. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Go ahead. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree. Yes. And his smell as Lebanon. Go ahead. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. Uh -huh. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. Yes. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, yes. what have I to do anymore with idols? He's going to put them idols away. Go ahead. I have heard him yes. and observed him. Yes. I am like a green fir tree. Go ahead. Form in me. I mean, form me is thy fruit. Go ahead. Who is wise? 
he shall understand these things. Go ahead. Prove it, and he shall know them. That's right. Go ahead. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. Read that now one more time. Let's make it make sense. Who is wise? Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Because he going to understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. Prudent makes you understand, and you're going to know some things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For the ways of the Lord are right. We know that the ways of the Lord is right. Yes. And what? And the just shall walk in them. And those that's in Christ going to walk justly in them. Right. That's right. That's right. Mm. In his laws is what he's talking about. In his commandments, you're going to walk in that. Right. That's right. That's right. Because those ten tell you how to love God. The first four is how to love God. And from number five all the way through number ten shows you how you're supposed to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Right. Go ahead, brother. But the transgressors what? shall fall therein. And them sinners, they're going to fall therein. Ooh. So with that being said, I thank y'all for y'all time today. Thank you. And I uh, hope y'all was able to get something out of that. But yes. again, it was come and let us return unto the Lord. Yes, sir. He's waiting. His He's hands waiting. is open. Yeah. And all you got to do is come. Right and this ain't going to be like when them Sunday comes. <laughs> this is a Sabbath day come to the Lord. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Uh, Lord, say the same. Uh, we'll close out with this closing scripture. You have it? You have it too? Yeah. So uh, go ahead so we can close out. No, okay. This is broke? Oh, mine. Let's close out. We're going to go ahead and get ready to close out, brother Sam. Let's close now. Oh, yeah. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debts. As we forgive our debts. Lead us not. Lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us. From me. From For thine is the king. For thine is the king. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we say. In Jesus' name we say. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. 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 God of Israel. Praise the Lord. God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for y'all time today. Appreciate you guys coming out. Yeah, we do work, man. Y'all got time to feel. I think to make it to the child. Get y'all some yeah, child this evening. Good work. Great work. Right. work. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we thank you again. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 Oh. Come on now. Yes, yes ma'am. Well, you have I'm, a really good day. I'm never going to take my skinny pants. Let me enjoy you coming yeah, today. Yeah, I'll take that one. Okay, go ahead. Like I say, sometimes we just... As long as the ink don't come out every time. Yeah, I can have it goes a long way. I'll be writing my son and 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 I'll be writing my son Okay, I got I'm you. Help I'm glad you stayed for Oh, yeah, thank yes, you. Sir, thank you. I well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Oh, yeah, praise yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you. I just hope we move on a lot of us, man. Yes, we're about there, brother. God bless you, too. Yes, sir. Right. We about there, man. Amen. Yeah. yeah Saturday is that day. <laughs> uh, it is, my brother. It's always been that day. Thank you. But like I say, they had to have the slaves to work out. Yeah. And then finally, when they gave my off day, it was Sunday. So they didn't quit that rest day. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they were mad at y'all. Yeah. Yeah, they said, now this is the rest day. Right, right. But it never was. I tell you, you yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Good to see you at y'all. Mm -hmm. right. Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight. Okay. Eight. Eight. That they had their back to the temple and they worshiped the sun. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. where sun worship is. Sun worship. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Oh, man. God. Yeah, I'm glad my brother back there finally woke up. <laughs> he came in late. Y'all walked right past him, man. They didn't tell me nothing. I ain't see you when you were asleep out there. I was sleeping. <laughs> I know I'm busy. Where you were standing yeah, at? See? Where you were standing at? My usual post. Right 
right there by that green box. You are? Outside the fence, sitting on the bike rack. Oh, oh man. You ain't here pulling the luck. No. You were sleeping. That guy said, man, they been gone. You wasn't with the sleep. You ain't wasn't with the sleep. Yeah, he said, I was sitting on that thing. No, no. Go ahead, come on. I said, try to eat you up in here, man. I'm like, man. Yeah, he real late. Well, he like the second person in line today. What? They gone already? Man, he been gone about 20 minutes. Brother, no, man. Brother, no.